If you've ever had a question whether the mainstream media distorts, whips up, throws things out of focus, or has an agenda, especially when it comes to the Trump administration, look no further than my Facebook and Twitter, hashtag Judge Jeanine. If you've ever had a question whether the mainstream media distorts, whips up, throws things out of focus, or has an agenda, especially when it comes to the Trump administration, look no further than California You're a genius, a medical doctor from their state health department lecturing how not to touch your face as the woman repeatedly touches the surface, then her face, and literally puts her fingers in her mouth. If you listen to the mainstream media, it's time to buy the family burial plot, visit the cemetery where the dirt is definitely cleaner than your kitchen counter or your bathroom handles. But the coronavirus outbreak has the potential to become a global pandemic. It's a virus like the flu. It actually can be mistaken for the flu, a sore throat, a cough, a fever. And by the way, it is flu season. Stop panicking, fear mongering, hiding under your bed and freaking out. Wait, what? In fact, <laughs> snap out of it. Do it! Slap me, bitch. Don't listen to Trump. <laughs> Listen to him. Let's face it, the president is a reality star. The response to the coronavirus in the United States is being led by the most incompetent and ignorant president in history. So what's the downside of their doomsday reporting? The downside is predictable. When people are scared, when people think it's just a question of time before they start dropping like flies, they go into survival mode. Say what? Sadly, that's true. They don't invest, the market suffers. They talk about canceling Mar March Madness, Coachella, and canceling airlines and cruise ship reservations. The economy suffers. They don't spend money, the economy suffers. They go into depression mode because their quality of life is over. Stop panicking, fear mongering, hiding under your bed, and freaking out. It's a virus. And who better to trumpet a slowing economy than CNN? Wall Street is rattled by the worldwide outbreak of the coronavirus. The Dow closing down more than 350 points today for a total loss of more than 3,000 points over the past week. My, my. You want to focus on the Dow now? The Dow now? The Dow now? The Dow now? Where were you when the Dow, the S&P 500, and NASDAQ all repeatedly reached record highs under President Trump? You weren't interested then, were you? Where were you when the Dow closed at a record high more than 100 times since Donald Trump's election? Where were you when animal spirits were driving this country to new economic heights? And for your information, our economy can sustain a 3,000-point drop because we are at record highs. Side of their doomsday reporting. The downside is predictable. When people are scared, when people think it's just a question of time before they start dropping like flies, they go into survival mode. Sadly, that's true. They talk about canceling Mar March Madness, Coachella, and canceling airlines and cruise ship reservations. The economy suffers. They go into depression mode because their quality of life is over. Stop panicking, fear-mongering, hiding under your bed, and freaking out. Your information, 
our economy can sustain a 3,000-point drop because we are at record highs. It's a virus, like the flu. It actually can be mistaken for the flu. A sore throat, a cough, a fever. And by the way, it is flu season. <laughs> You say, but people are dying. Job numbers just came out, and they're up beyond expectations. So, what to do? And the media complains that there was a lackluster initial response by the Trump administration. And on January 31st, the Trump administration restricted entry into this country from China in an effort to counter the spreading coronavirus outbreak. Even the Failing. New York Times noted the administration barred entry by most foreign nationals who had recently visited China. American travelers were under quarantine as the administration declared a rare public health emergency. The president did this knowing that it would send shocks through the stock market, that it would rattle industry between the world's two largest economies. The federal government is working continuously, vigorously, and forcefully to cut the bureaucratic red tape. If you listen to the mainstream media, it's time to buy the family burial plot, visit the cemetery, where the dirt is definitely cleaner than your kitchen counter or your bathroom handles. He immediately put together the smartest, most sophisticated team of doctors, scientists, and healthcare professionals to deal with his declared coronavirus health emergency. He assigned to Vice President Mike Pence the job of organizing, monitoring a team to contain, mitigate, and treat the problem, working with states and local governments. I'm the President of the United States. And not only are condolences in order, but we owe it to their families and all Americans to come up with a vaccine. His efforts have been nonstop, keenly focused and heralded. The political criticisms by the left, like Governor Inslee of Washington State and Governor Cuomo of New York State, are nothing more than political gamesmanship that have no place in this effort. The effort to develop a vaccine, making testing kits available to every state lab and available to every doctor in this country, with a minimum of $4 million going to each of the 50 states, is underway. It's a virus, like the flu. Like the flu, tests for coronavirus are now being made available to every state lab. Clinical trials will begin within five weeks for the vaccine. Now, they say the mortality rate for coronavirus is higher than the flu. But consider, though, that we have a flu vaccine, and yet in 2019, 16,000 Americans died from the flu. Now, they say the mortality rate for coronavirus is higher than the flu. It's a virus, like the flu. It actually can be mistaken for the flu. A sore throat, a cough, a fever. And by the way, it is flu season. Imagine if we did not have the flu vaccine, the flu would be a pandemic. So all the talk about coronavirus being so much more deadly doesn't reflect reality. Without a vaccine, the flu would be far more deadly. Now, they say the mortality rate for coronavirus is higher than the flu. But consider, though, that we have a flu vaccine, and yet in 2019, 16,000 Americans died from the flu. Clinical trials will begin within five weeks for the vaccine. Now, what we do know is the mortality rate is much higher, according to reports. The risk of dying if infected with the coronavirus is higher. It is certainly higher. So what to do? I know everyone thinks, that, thinks there's got to be more to this. The stock market is up. For the week, long-term interest rates are plunging so people can refinance. And those who need subsidies are going to get them. Let's start with the fact that the U.S. has one of the best health care systems in the world. It often slows down vaccine approval. And rest assured, the best, the brightest, and the resolute are working nonstop to create this vaccine. And gloves won't matter because the virus can last for hours on them and surfaces. And as the Surgeon General said on Justice last week, you don't need a mask unless you're sick. And there's no need to go out and clean out the store shelves. 
And if you want to complain about something, complain about the fact that we rely on China and even India for ingredients for some of our medication, even the meds themselves. Like nuclear medicine and Molly 99, it's time to have a supply chain for our medicine in the United States. Time to make America first there. So, maybe Bill Maher has the right attitude. People die. That's what happens in life. And wash your damn hands. Wash them and then wash them again. It's a virus. And that's my open. Let me know what you think on my Facebook and Twitter. Hashtag Judge Janine.